Hold it over two. Good luck, Dan. Okay, pal. Go after him, boy. Go on, Jerry. Get a picture of that fellow holding over there. <laughs> Your hero. Oh, yeah? <laughs> hey, Dan! Step on it. Show these fellows. Okay, Pat. Hey, Dan. Got your rabbit's foot with you? What for, Marty? Your time. <laughs> This bought and gray will feed your friend Holden plenty of dust before this race is over. Oh, yeah? Well, Dan gave Gray a good trimming last year. <laughs> that was last year. <laughs> Say ah, ah. Keep on repeating. Ah, 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 ah. What's the matter, Doc? Too much static? Or don't you like the program? Oh, you're coming along all right. But it'll take some time before those fractures heal, young man. I sure get the breaks, Doc. But I'll be all right for the Boomville Derby, won't I? You'll be away from the track until that shoulder sets. How's the other cowboy? <laughs> I'm afraid he'll live too. Has my radiator cooled off, nurse? Yes, much better. Hey, nurse, my radiator's cold too. How about a little alcohol? You know. I recommend alcohol only for special radiators. You can cover yours with an old blanket. <laughs> well, how does the back feel, Dan? Oh. oh, still stiff. 
sciatica, lumbago, and automobiles are the three diseases that attack a person in the back. The first two are curable. <laughs> Goofy. <laughs> now, now, Martin. Dan's coming along fine. He'll be on his feet again for long. Sure, I'm not going to miss the Boonville Derby. Boy, those are going to be easy stakes. Dan, two weeks ago, I'd have said that you'd be driving a wheelchair for the rest of your life. You got off lucky, but no more racing. I hope you understand that. You mean I'm... I'm through? You'd better forget it, Dan. Well, I'll see you boys tomorrow. Oh, uh, nurse. This way, please. Well, Dan, looks like you and me are just a couple of pedestrians from now on. Yeah. Yeah, it does. But you'll only have to lay off for a while. You heard what he said about me. Oh, buck up, Dad. Gets everyone sooner or later. I've been thinking of quitting myself. You? Sure. Every time I get into one of them chariots, I remember that it takes 90 nuts to hold it together and only one nut to drive it. And someday... It gets in your blood, though. Yeah. But I've been thinking of changing. What? Your underwear? <laughs> no. I've been thinking of a garage, repair work, and all that sort of thing. How about you and me teaming up, Dan? Go ahead and spill your proposition. What is it? We'll go 50-50. We both got some dough, and we both know plenty about automobiles. Say, that sounds all right. You know, Marty, I've always liked the idea of tinkering with cars. Me too. I got a swell shape in overalls. <laughs> oh, no kidding, Dan. I'm not thinking of one of them tinkering garages. There's too many of them now. You're sure right about that. Oh, I bet you there's a lot of repair men right here in this town. They sit around all day with lead in their pants. See you, Mr. Holden. Shall I take the car? Thank you. Hello, Dan. Hello, Pat. <laughs> Hello there. Gee, it's darn nice of you to call again, Pat. Well, I'm a busy woman, Dan, but I can always manage to get away for a minute. <laughs> it almost makes it worthwhile getting cracked up. Flowers and... and you. How's your boyfriend getting along? Who, Marty? Why don't you ask him? How are you feeling, Mr. Gray? Everybody calls me Marty, Miss Corey. <laughs> well, everybody calls me Pat. <laughs> oh, I feel terrible, Pat. Feel my pulse. He, he's a faker. He just wants you to hold hands with him. <laughs> oh, you're saying something about flowers, Dan? Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm just wild about wildflowers. Make mine pansies. Oh, I suppose if I brought you flowers, you'd kid the ear off me. Oh, I'm not as bad as that. <laughs> the trouble is, I've never had a girl bring me flowers. Well, that is not a girl like you, anyway. <laughs> is that a bid for sympathy? No, for flowers. But what chance has a fellow like me got against a chic like Dan? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Ask him to tell you about the big merger. Oh, you mean about uh, Bethlehem Iron and Penn Steel? No, a regular merger. Marty Gray and Dan Holden. Well, how exciting. Tell me more. Marty and I are going in the garage business, that's what. Great. Oh, congratulations. Now you'll be able to take me for one of those businessmen's lunches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be the businessman. Dan's only the office boy. He's just sore about the flowers, Pat. Office boy, hmm? Well, let me tell you, Mr. Gray, you're mighty lucky to get Dan for a partner. Say, Incidentally, this is going to make a swell story for the paper. Two local boys go to work. <laughs> did I say anything about work? Oh, well, maybe I did. <laughs> well, Harristown Times will be right behind you, Dan. You know, he's quite a hero around here. Everyone has a lot of confidence in him. Oh, I guess that'll hold me for a while. Well, so long, gentlemen. Remember, I'm going to be your first customer. <laughs> Bye. So long, Pat. Thanks for the flowers. So long. Why?
What a girl. You're telling me. Mr. Caldwell. Oh, hello, Dan. Funny, I was trying to get you on the phone just a minute ago. Wanted to talk to you before going ahead on that repair job of yours. Now, listen, Dan. You boys don't get me in for no big job. No siree. My rider is this. <laughs> well, come on in. I want to talk to you about something. Oh, hello, Gray. Hi, Mr. Cohen. Well, hey, Gretty, I haven't got much time for Gap. Got to get to a meeting with the city council. Well, were them spark plugs sticking, like I told you? No, but the valves were sticking. That's what I mean. That's it, valves. And uh, besides that, Mr. Caldwell, you need... Wait a minute, wait a minute. I had that car overhaul less than a year and a half ago. New paint job, fenders, everything. I know, sir, but since then, the car's been pretty noisy, hasn't it? Well, yes. Seems like everything makes a noise but the horn. And you've been feeding her plenty of oil, haven't you? Yes, I guess you'd call it plenty. But at least I've been getting plenty of lubrication. When she eats oil, that's the time to worry about lubrication. I don't get you. Let me explain. When the piston rings don't function, the hot explosive gases leak past the rings and the protective oil film is burned. Furthermore, these explosive gases pass down into the crankcase and dilute the oil. Then you get poor lubrication. Rapid wear. You get carbon. Ridiculous. Why drag carbon into it? What's that got to do with it? Hey, slow down a bit, Marty. Mr. Colville isn't quite up on engines. Oh, ain't I? Well, maybe you don't know it, but I've been driving a car for over three years. Why not let me fix you up with a set of perfect surgical rings now? It'll save you a big expense in the end. Yeah, I've seen them things advertised in the magazines. But nope, I ain't spending any money. Look, Mr. Caldwell, you'll be in as bad a fix as that guy there, if you don't do this job right. It'll pay for itself in no time, Mr. Caldwell. What oil mileage are you getting? Oil mileage? How should I know? I never pay any attention to them gadgets. Oh, you're doing about 350 to the gallon. We'll run it up to over 1,200 with these new rings. How much do they cost? Oh, a set of perfect circles won't cost you much. And you better put in a set of their new piston expanders. That'll quiet the job right down. Labor and all will stand you 13 or 14 dollars. And it'll be better than the cheap rebore job that it cost you twice that much. 14 dollars. No, no, I know, boys, you're trying to sell me a whole job here. But when I got a toothache and go to the dentist, I don't ask him to fix all my teeth. Now, that's where you make your mistake. Be true to your teeth or they'll be false to you. That's my motto. And the same goes for any tin lizard. Oh, all right. I'm sold. Let's figure it. <laughs> so busy sticking your nose into other people's business, I never get a chance to say more than ten words to you. Well, that's a newspaper woman's job, Dan. I have to get around and see things. And one day it's a wedding, the next day it's a race, so forth and so on. Yeah, that makes me one of the so forths and so ons. <laughs> By the way, I stuck my nose into a meeting of the village council over at Garfield the other day, a whiff of some news that may interest you boys. Interest us? Maybe. Oh, well, that's enough. Did you ever fix a fire engine? Fire engine? No, but I broke a lot of them when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, no, I mean a real honest-to-goodness fire engine. What's up? Well, don't you be scared if the Garfield engine pulls up in front of here pretty soon. It won't be a fire, but it may mean a job for the firm of Holden and Gray. Gee, Pat, you don't mean that. Hello, dirty face. Dirty face? <laughs> That's me. Oh. Hello, Pat. How's tricks? Great. 
And how is the Harristown City Treasurer today? Well, well, I may be the city treasurer, but these friends of yours think I'm the United States Mint. <laughs> well, I guess they know what's in the boat, all right. Well, what's the matter? Engine trouble again? I'll say. They sold me a bill of goods. I don't know how they did it, but they did. Well, you must have thought it was worthwhile if you agreed to let them do it. Well, I will say I got confidence in them boys. There now, Mr. Caldwell. You've hit the nail right on the head. Confidence. Well, you certainly can't get any place in this business unless people have confidence in you. I always say you've got to have confidence in the people that do things for you. <laughs> Someday I'm going to write an editorial on the subject. I don't quite see what you're driving at, Miss Corey. Look, look. Did you ever take a trip on one of those crack trains and have that feeling of safety because you trusted everybody in charge? Can't you just see that engineer giving that big locomotive the once-over? And the track walkers inspecting every foot of track along the way? Why, you know you're going to get to your destination safe and sound. Gosh, I see what you mean, Miss Corley. Say, that'd make a darn good editorial, all right. No, I hope to tell you it would. Mr. Caldwell, why do you think you were elected to city treasurer? Well, I suppose I... Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Caldwell. It was confidence. Confidence of the taxpayers in your honesty. Now, they remembered you as honest Bill Caldwell, the grocer whose scales were always right. It was that confidence put you in office. <laughs> Holy snakes, if I don't shake a leg, I won't have any office. I'm late for council meeting. Oh, jump in, Mr. Caldwell. I'm going to the meeting, too. Oh, thanks a lot. You owe me 98 cents, young lady. Charge it. Hey, wait a minute, dirty face. How would you two boys like to wash your faces next Saturday and take me to a dance? Gee, sounds swell, Pat. Is this a proposal or a proposition? It's an invitation. Oh. As a matter of fact, I expect to get a couple of tickets over at the meeting. You know, the mayor himself is giving the affair over at the Blue Moon Inn. It's a sort of a blowout for the people who helped elect him. They'll be dancing and eats and everything. Gee, thanks, Pat. Sounds like a big night. Huh? You going, Mr. Caldwell? I'm going. I'll possibly have to pay for the whole shindig. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, is it formal or do I wear a tie? A bow tie, dirty face. <laughs> you won't call me dirty face when you see me all dolled up. <laughs> well, don't forget, boys. I'll be looking for you. We'll be there. We'll be there. She's a swell girl, Dan. You're a lucky stiff. Am I? Hey, Arthur. Oh, Sam, you're a wonder. But tell me, why did I have to lie down? Boss, that's the only way I knows how to tie a bow tie. You see, I done used to work for an undertaker, and that was my job. Folks, having a 
Good time. Oh, it's a great party, Mr. Caldwell. Well, sit down and have something. It's all on the mayor. Yes, join us. There, now, how's that? What, no pickles? Well, what do you expect for nothing? All right. All right, run along. Don't bring your friends back. Well, excuse me, I'll be right back. Sit down, Dan. Well, Holden, how's business? Oh, can't kick Mr. Hartman. Say, this boy does all his work like he did my job. He don't have to worry any about business. Say, Dan, did you get that job of fixing the Garfield fire engine? Yes, we're working on it now. Uh, say, Logan, after all these complaints we've been having about our city repair work, maybe it wouldn't be such a bad idea to give these boys a crack at it. Yeah, yeah. We might be able to work out something. Why, sure. Yeah. Well, that boy has got our eye open for business, gentlemen. That's, no, that's, that's the idea. idea. Hello, Miss Mayer. Hello. 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 And you, I've been looking all over for you. That's how it's going to be. You can't get away with that. Well, party, huh? Wouldn't the Mayor be pleased to see you? Oh, hello, Pat. May I have the pleasure of dancing with you? Huh? What are you trying to do, risk me? You've danced with me just once tonight. Well, I thought... Uh... Don't you like dancing? Sure, I love dancing. Don't you? I adore it. What do you think we'll sit this one out? Oh, sure, but uh, when? Well, in the moonlight, of course. Where do you suppose one sits out of dance? Oh, I know. <laughs> but Pat, suppose there's no moon. Haven't you any imagination? I want to talk to you, Marty. Gee, this sounds serious. Oh, oh look, there's the moon. <laughs> I wish they'd turn that darn thing off. What? Why, what's the matter with you? Haven't you got any romance in your soul? Can't you hear the crickets cricketing? And listen to the birdies. <laughs> Oh, silly. Well, I've got romance, that's oh, all. Oh, come on over here, Marty. <laughs> romance, huh? Lot you know about romance. Yeah? Did you ever see my address book? Oh, I know my name isn't in it. <laughs> Sit down. Now, look here, Marty Gray. You treat me as if I had poison ivy. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, yes, you do. What's the big idea? The big idea is a guy named Dan. What? You mean Dan and me? Well, I don't mean Dan and Clara Bow. What's the matter with everybody? Why, why, Dan's been just a pal of mine for years. I've never thought of him as anything except a pal. Why, of course, I'm awfully fond of him and all that sort now, of thing. Now, wait a minute, Pat. I fell pretty hard for you the first day I met you. As a matter of fact, it's been pretty tough not letting you know about it. But the way things stand, we... Well, I... I can't... Can't what? I can't just cut in on a pal like Dan. But I've told you the way I feel about him. I know you have. But he's nuts about you, huh? Can you imagine how he'd feel towards me? I'm in business with him. Partners. We've got to work together. But don't you see... If... Oh, I don't want to hear any more, Mr. Gray. Let's drop it. Of course, business must come first. Just try to forget that anything's been said. Oh, now, wait a minute, Pat. Uh, you see, Holden, with the present setup of the city council, Hart here is chairman of the committee that has charge of all maintenance work. And we might, well, I'm not saying that we will, but we might be able to throw a piece of that business over to your shop. Sure, how about it, Hart? Well, why not? Holden looks like he's regular. Say, sounds very interesting. I'd sure like to get together with you. I'll talk to my partner about it. Well, maybe the first thing in the morning. 
Oh, incidentally, I'd like to have you come over and see our shop. I guess you'll agree that we're equipped to do almost any kind of work over there. Yeah, sure, sure, we'll do that. Sure, well, we gotta be going. Come yeah. on, Logan. Uh, so long, uh, Good night, Holden. See you so later. Long. Good night. Oh, Marty. Listen, Marty, I think we might get a look in on some of that city repair work. I just had a talk with one of the big shots about it. I'll tell you all about it in the morning. Let's find Pat. Well, there she goes. I wonder what she's up to. What's happened? Search me. Women are sure funny. Did you read Pat's article on the City Hall game this morning? Yeah. Hot stuff, ain't it? That girl will sure blow the lid off things. Now, that reminds me. You said last night that you were going to tell me about that City Hall job. What do you know? Oh, nothing definite, you understand. But Logan and Hart have got a lot to say about city maintenance work, and, and they're sold on us. Why? Guess they've heard about the kind of work we do. Probably figure it'll be good business to play with us. And maybe good politics. Yeah, politics. You don't get anything for nothing. You've got the wrong slant on that, Marty. They don't want anything. Oh, no. They never do. Politics and business are strange bedfellows. They don't mix well. Yeah, but you usually find them in the same bunk. Bunk is right. Hey, what's the matter with you this morning, Marty? Oh, nothing. But look here, Dan. This political stuff is all very well. Just as soon as you get tied up with that crowd, you'll find yourself shaking hands with a lot of itching pawns. They'll want to be paid off. And if you pay off, there's no profit. Then you start cutting down on quality, putting in cheap parts, and turning out a lousy job. But look here, old man. You don't look at this thing in the right light. Oh, I don't, eh? Well, maybe I ain't got the gift of gab to make myself clear. But look. Here's something that'll explain what I mean. Get a load of this. Now, the only safe thing to sell is performance. And when we're selling that, we make a decent profit. Just you start in with close prices, and you're skating on thin ice. In fact, you're liable to go right through and sink. You're exaggerating. I can't see that. Now, wait a minute. Look at the Windsor Garage that's had all this city business. You know the kind of work they've been turning out. I don't believe they've ever made a dime off the city. They've had to put in cheap parts to break even. Look how many of their customers have come over to us. They've lost almost all their business. That's what cheap parts do to you. But we won't have to do that. Stick around. Logan and Hart will be here soon. Will you hear what they have to say? I'm not interested in what they have to say. You can talk to them if you want to. I don't. Seems to be in a big rush this morning, don't she? Must be. I guess she's pretty busy these days. See her article in this morning's paper? Yeah. But if I were her boyfriend, I'd tell that gal to go a little easy with this explosion business. She's hitting the nail on the head, though. Yeah, well, that's what you think, brother. Let me tell you something. This new administration's going to change things. All that baloney about payoff politics ain't going to do her or nobody any good. That's why we want to talk to you about this city repair work. Now, you fellows have got a pretty good rep around town, and we've got plenty of work to place. But we want to put it where there won't be any more belly aching about favoritism and such. Right, Lok? Absolutely. Well, I've talked it over with my partner, and... Uh, yeah? What does he think? Well, he doesn't feel as though we ought to take on any more of a load, seeing as how we're pretty busy as it is. He thinks that we hey, ought to... Hey, does he do all the thinking around here? Certainly not. He's my pal and my partner. He can't see it the way I do. Mm, in other words, you're for it and he's against it, huh? Something like that. 
Well, if you ask me, I think you're rather foolish to pass up a chance to make some real dough. Pal or no pal, I'd think it over. We'll see you later. Come on, Logan. Yeah. So long. This isn't going to do Harris Town no good. Why, what's the average citizen of this town going to think when he reads stuff like that? The average citizen is all burned up, Mr. Caldwell. That's why we print it. We're going to continue to print it till we get at the bottom of things. Bottom hell, you've struck bottom here. Not quite. How about this little meeting that the Callaway crowd is pulling off tonight? Blue Moon Inn at... Meeting? Callaway? Well, where does he come in? Where doesn't he come in? Now, you know as well as I do, Mr. Caldwell, that elections are no elections. Callaway is still head man around here. He's trying to run the new crowd just as he ran the old. If you are mistaken, Miss Corey, oh. our methods are different from the old crowd. Besides, Tim Callaway don't subscribe to our opinions. Yeah, but he subscribed to your campaign fund. Well, we can't stop him from doing that. Uh, you can't stop him from doing anything. Why, everybody knows in this town that if you want to open a speak, see Callaway. If you want to get a license for a dance hall or a pool room, see Callaway. See Callaway if you want to fix anything. I don't mean in a repair shop. Oh, oh hello, Hello. Oh, how do you do? Now, now go on, Miss Corey. What about this meeting? Where'd you get the dope? Oh, a little birdie whispered it in my ear. Whispered? What? That you're all getting together at the inn tonight for a little... Meeting with the Callaway crowd? Well, we don't know nothing about that. I ain't going to be there. Me neither. Well, maybe I had the wrong tip. <laughs> Anyhow, why should I bother going over there? So long, gentlemen. Say, Miss Corey, right. my wife's giving the bridge party, and she'd like a little press notice. Oh, all right. I think it's a week from Tuesday, oh, right. please. Like hell, she won't be there. Trying to throw us off the track, eh? That dame's dynamite. What do you suppose she found out about tonight? Search me. I better call up the boys and have the meeting shifted to another place. Now, wait a minute. What that girl needs is a good taking down. We'd better arrange to have a little meeting for her special benefit. I'll give her something to write about. Wait a minute, Logue. That's risky business, especially the way Dan Holden feels about her right now. It, uh... Might not be so good for us if we're going to try to get him in on a deal. What do you mean, Dan Holden? A blind man could see that she's crazy about his partner. Who, Gray? Certainly. Mm. Boy, I've got it. Yeah, it takes a mastermind like me to figure these things out. Listen, we can do business with Holden if it wasn't for Gray. Right? I think I see a way to kill two birds with one stone. Oh. If we could just split up those two guys. Oh, boy, this has been one busy day. Sure has. More of that lemon meringue pie left over at Steve's? Yep. But you better shake a leg if you want something. It's after seven. Okay. How much longer are you going to be on that Davis job? Oh, I'm going to put in a couple of hours yet. Hey, what was the matter with old man Davis? What was all the argument about? Oh, it's the same old story. I had to sell him the idea that you can't get something for nothing. I told him that most of the cost went into labor, and he was simply throwing his money away by trying to save a little on cheap parts. Petty wise and found foolish like most of them. Right? Oh, he came across all right. When I told him that all the race drivers use perfect circles, he'll find out the difference when he checks the mileage on his oil. Well, I'll come back for you later. We'll go down to Joe's for a couple of beers. No, thanks. I'm turning in early tonight. Hey, what's the matter with you, Marty? You've been off your feet all day. What's eating you? Nothing. Too much party last night, I guess. Well, so long. So long. See you tomorrow. OK. 
Okay. Good evening. One? Yes, please. This way, please. Well, good evening, Miss Cole. Right down here, Sam. please. Not many people here tonight. Hmm? Uh, just one of them off nights. We have many of them these days. Sam, I, I was expecting to see Mr. Calloway and some of the boys. They here yet? Uh, yes, sir. Some of that crowd is here now. Is up in room three. Uh, uh what you all gonna have, Miss? Oh, let me see. Oh, you order me uh, an oyster stew. But, Miss. That'll take all of 15 or 20 minutes. That's all right, Sam. You ordered me that too. Yes, ma'am. I'll be back. All right. your pardon, I'm looking for Mr. Calloway. Why, uh, miss, I... I don't know. Mr. Calloway, uh... Well, he's pretty busy just now. Conference. Well, you just tell him that Miss Corey of the Times is anxious to see him. Well, uh, you better wait in here, then. Just have a seat there, miss. It's in the bag, boy. That. She won't stick her nose in on any meeting tonight. Hey, what about that message for Gray at the garage? Blake will take care of that. Yeah. This fellow blew a tire. He ain't got a spare, and he's in a hurry. Well, where's the car? He's up the road a ways. You better come to the Blue Moon in first, buddy. Okay, I'll be right over. Stick around, I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Well, hello, Dan. Oh, hello, Dan. Hello. hello. Say, Dan, did you talk to your partner any more about that proposition? Yeah, but honestly, he's kind of leery of the idea. Doesn't think we ought to get tangled up with any political business. Oh, he doesn't, eh? And he calls himself a friend of yours. Yeah, now that's the trouble, Dan. Too many folks got the wrong plan on politics in this town. <coughs> Take that girlfriend of yours, for example. Who, Pat? Yeah. Oh, Pat's all right. Yeah, sure she is. But she's always trying to make out that we're mixed up with that Callaway crowd. Hey, Dan, that crowd's as crooked as they come. Let me they tell you. They wouldn't stop at nothing. Let me tell you something. You want to steer that Miss Corey straight. You better tell her to lay off a Callaway. He's a bad hombre. How do you mean? Well, she told us today that she had a tip that Calloway and his crowd were going to meet at the Blue Moon tonight. And she said she expected to be there. Yeah? Well, maybe I ought to run over there and... Uh, no, no, no. That's a bad crowd to get mixed up with. I wouldn't do it if I were you. But 
Suppose she did go. Well, maybe she wasn't going down there on business. They got a pretty good orchestra down there, you know. Well, we'll be seeing you later, Dan. Yeah. So long, Dan. Take it over. going on up here? I'm locked in. No, oh, no, don't get excited. Oh, I'm glad to see you, Marty, but what are you doing here? I just got a call to come over and fix a car. They told me to come up and see a party in room four. I knocked at the door, but nobody answered, so I came in. Well, let's get out of here pronto. We'll talk about it later. Say, what is this, a eh, Jag? Somebody's locked this door, too. I'm going to make a beeline for that phone and start things going. Well, I can understand about you, but what do they want with me here? I don't know. We'll find out soon enough. You all looking for Miss Corey? Yes. yes. Well, she just went up to room three oh. not long ago. Oh, did she? Yes, sir. Well, I guess you'll find her up there. Thanks. That's quite all right. the inside. That is, if they want to. Try the lock on the inside, Pat. Pat? Oh, I've already tried that, Marty. Oh, what's up? Oh, I can't stop to tell you about it now, Dan. I've got to get to a phone fast. Dan, I'm glad you showed up. Oh, yeah? This looks like some kind of a frame-up to me. When I got here, I found Pat locked in. You see, I got a call to come over to fix a car. You wouldn't double-cross a pal, would you? Now, look here, Dan. You aren't thinking that I... Oh, ain't I? Now, keep your shirt on. I don't want any of your alibis. I believe what I see. I thought there was something going on behind my back. Oh, don't be dumb. You're a dirty, low-down sneak and a cheat. And she isn't any better. Now, wait a minute.
They had it all worked out cleverly. Okay, Pat. Your story checks with Martin. Well, maybe you've had enough. From now on, Greg, keep out of my way. No, 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 I've never seen any of the men before, but they must be part of the Callaway mob. Oh, no. They knew you were snooping about and give us a slip. Ah, but if you want to be in on some of the fun, you better rush over to the old brewery right away. Okay. That oyster stew you ordered has been ready for some time, ma'am. I've been keeping it hot. Well, never mind the stew, Sam. Listen, do you know any shortcuts over to the old brewery? The old brewery? Let me see. You goes down to the forks and you takes a left yeah. turn, and then you turns right. You can't miss it. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. Just a moment, Miss Corey. You don't want to go to the old brewery. Well, who says I don't? Well, I've heard it said it isn't very safe for little girls. Well, thanks for worrying about me. I can take care of myself. Now, listen, I said that you can't go to the old brewery, Just and I mean... Get your hands off me. I'm going to get Wait off here. Wait a minute here. Let's go. Here, let's get out there. Let's go. Wait, wait, wait. Say, you're putting a fire extinguisher over here. Get something there. Get over here. Why the place is on fire. Come on. Well, you all better come down to the Blue Moon Inn quick. Cause this whole dump is burning up, and I don't mean slavery. Let's go, Gus having trouble? Plenty. Anything I can do to help? No, not now. But 
Central phone. Put in a call for the Garfield engine. Tell him it's over to the Blue Moon Inn. We'll never make it in time. Okay. He wants to be told of it. I'll go sue the town for this. The coat of my new suit's up there burning. Is that all? That's enough. What's I'm going to do with them two fat pants? <laughs> Any place we can get any water around here? Yeah, you can get some from that pool there. You've got to have an engine to pump it. The Garfield department is on the way. The Hairstone engine's stuck on the road. What's the matter with it? Engine trouble. A lousy repair job, that's what. Well, the taxpayers certainly shell out enough. Another case of somebody getting a wreck off. You're right, Oh, Dan. Dan, I'm so glad to see you. Where's Marty? How should I know? I'm not his nursemaid. Why, Dan? Well, tell me what's happened. Well, we had a bit of an argument. About what? You ought to know. He didn't have to go behind my back to get you up there. Double crosser. You staff. Did it ever occur to you that this might have been a frame up? Frame up? Of course. But I thought. Well, it looked as if there was something between you two. Well, there is, you see. It's all one sided. I'm crazy about him, but. He couldn't see me. Wouldn't cut in on his partner, his pal. See. But, but, Pat, where is he? Well, that's what I've been trying to find out. What's happened? Oh, we had a scrap. And when I left him, he was upstairs in that room. Well, we looked upstairs. He wasn't there. He must be around her somewhere. Let's look. <coughs>
boys, the way things are shaping up, you're certainly sitting pretty. That expose after the fire made the whole town realize that this cheap repair work the grafters were putting over was not only costly, but criminal. I'm afraid from now on, you fellows are going to do pretty well. Well, I must be going. Hello, boys. Hello. Oh, oh, oh thank you. Good morning, Doctor. How Good are the morning, patients? Sorry. Well, they're about ready to be discharged. And if they ever show their faces in this hospital again... Well, if we ever do, we want cut rates. Eh, hey, Dan? <laughs> right. For me? An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I was just going anyway. Well, <laughs> goodbye. So long, Doc. <laughs> who's the pears for? Who mm, pears are for me? Well, uh, who's the orange for? The orange is for Dan. Oh, the forgotten man. Oh, no, honey. This is for you. Well, if that's the way it's going to be, I guess I'd better leave the room. <laughs> I can see where this is going to be a perfect triangle. Perfect triangle, hell. This is going to be a perfect circle. <laughs> 